from history. Welcome, whimsical wanderers of the web, to another whimsical whirlwind tour through the wacky and wonderful world of weirdos from history. Today, we're tickling the ivories of intrigue with the peculiar pianist and composer, Eric Satie, a man whose melodies meander through the mists of minimalism and whose life was as lyrical as it was ludicrous. So let's lift the lid on this keyboard-clacking character and see what sonatas of strangeness he composed in the symphony of his life. Born on May 17, 1866, in the Norman nook of Honfleur, France, Eric Satie was the son of a shipbroker with a disdain for the English, despite being married to one. Little Eric's early years were a medley of melancholy after his mother's untimely departure to the choir invisible when he was just six. The lad was left to learn life's lyrics with his grandparents, where he discovered his devotion to the divine dulcet tones of music. At the tender age of ten, Sati sauntered into the Paris Conservatoire, a place he would later label a penitentiary for pianists. His teachers there tarred him with the brush of indolence, branding him the laziest student, a badge he bore with a bizarre blend of pride and petulance. Despite their disparaging declarations, Sati's spirit for songwriting was undampened. In a fit of youthful yearning for something beyond the banal, our velvet-clad virtuoso volunteered for military service in 1886. But as fate would have it, the barracks, ballyhoo and bugle corps were not to be his backdrop for long. Sati's stint as a soldier was cut short by a deliberate dance with pneumonia, leading to his discharge and a return to civilian serenades. The 1890s saw Sati sashaying through the salons and soirees of Paris, his compositions capturing the capriciousness of café culture. He tickled the ivories at the infamous Chat Noir, where bohemians and bourgeoisie alike basked in his bizarre ballads. It was here that Sati's eccentric essence began to bloom like a nocturne in November. Sati's social circle soon sparkled with the likes of Debussy and Ravel. But it was his own oddities that outshone them all. He founded his own religion in 1892, the Église Métropolitaine d'Art de Jésus Conducteur, becoming its sole member, high priest, pope and parishioner, a one-man congregation of curious cultish charm. In the realm of romance, Satie's heartstrings hummed a haunting harmony for the artist Suzanne Valadon. After a single nocturnal note together in 1893, he proposed, but their duet was doomed to dissolve. She departed, leaving Satie to compose in a minor key, his heart echoing with the emptiness of unrequited adoration. By the turn of the century, Satie's symphony of life played a peculiar presto. He moved to a Parisian suburb where he paraded the pavements, hammer in hand, a personal percussion against potential peril. His friends fondly referred to him as the Velvet Gentleman, for his wardrobe was as monochromatic as a moonlit sonata, seven identical velvet suits, one for each day of the week. In 1905, at the ripe age of 40, Satie decided that his musical mastery needed more meat. He returned to the academic arena, this time at the Schola Cantorum, where he sharpened his skills and graduated with the gusto of a man half his age. His compositions from this period plucked the petals of traditional form, leaving a bouquet of harmonic innovation. Satie's sardonic wit shone in his scores, which he peppered with playful prescriptions for performers. He penned pieces like three pear-shaped pieces, a title that teased the traditionalists and tickled the avant-garde. His music meandered through the mundane, making merry with the metronome of modernity. The year 1917 heralded Satie's scandalous symphonic spectacle Parade, a ballet that baffled and bemused the bourgeoisie. With a cacophony of typewriters, sirens and airplane propellers, Satie shattered the silence of the status quo. The performance provoked a pandemonium that plopped the composer into a pot of public prominence. Satie had penchant for pale provisions, indulged in a bizarrely monochrome menu. His diet, as eccentric as his melodies, was a parade of pallid edibles. Eggs, the epitome of simplicity. Sugar, sweet and straightforward, and even shredded bones, made regular appearances on his plate, 
accompanied by the unassuming elegance of veal and the richness of animal fat. In his culinary concert, coconuts and chicken cooked in clear water were keynotes, creating a creamy crescendo. Moldy fruit and modest rice mingled with turnips, while sausages infused with the curious scent of camphor provided a peculiar counterpoint. His choice of cheeses stayed true to the theme, with only the whitest varieties making the cut, akin to carefully chosen chords in a composition. Sati's later life was a lyrical labyrinth of legal lacerations and laughable librettos. He sparred with critics in court, composed carnivalesque cantatas, and continued to confound the conservative with his furniture music, melodies meant to meld into the milieu, unnoticed and unobtrusive, like a lullaby for the living room. As the 1920s serenaded Sati with success, his health waned. The maestro of minimalism, the harbinger of the harmonically humdrum, found his final rest on July 1st, 1925. His legacy, a lexicon of musical minimalism and a testament to the triumph of the truly unique over the trite and the traditional. And so, dear devotees of the delightfully different, we draw the drapes on the droll drama of Eric Sartihi, the sublime sultan of the surreal, the harmonious hermit of the harmonium. If this peculiar portrait of a past personage has plucked your fancy, do be a dear and deploy a digital thumbs up. Subscribe for more symphonies of the strange, and should the spirit move you, serenade us with your sentiments in the comments below. Until next time, keep your curiosity cadenced and your history humorous, 